Hi Richard. Hi Graeme. This is your first Walter Hayes Trophy, is that correct? Yes, first, uh, really first international race I've ever done. Um, and I can't tell you, it's a lifelong dream and a bit of a bucket list thing really for my brother and I to come and do this. You've come quite a long way, haven't you? Yeah, well it's a, it's a, it's a long flight over the pond, but uh, um, we've sort of been talking about it. We started talking about it when we were racing Formula Ford back in the late 70s. <laughs> Not coming to Walter Hayes, but to, you know, doing something international. Um, you know, family, work, careers, all that sort of stuff uh, got in the way. Oh, got in the way, yeah. <laughs> but uh, here we are, uh, you know, 35 years later, uh, you know, living that dream, and uh, I just can't tell you how delighted we are to be here. So can you give me a, a brief, a short history of your career? <laughs> <laughs> well, it sort of started before I was born, really. Uh, my dad was Lex Davison, who was a four-times Australian Grand Prix winner and actually drove at Silverstone uh, for Aston Martin back in the early 60s. Um, so, but he, he was uh, tragically killed in 1965 in a, in a, um, a Tasman series uh, race uh, at Sandown Park. So, uh, I was only 10 at the time, so <clears throat> it wasn't that easy for me to come into motor racing. But I eventually uh, bought a Formula Ford when I was about 21 or 22. Really had no idea what I was doing because I didn't have that sort of father support to, to guide me along. Uh, but. Uh, did Formula Ford for two or three years and was runner-up in the Australian series in 1978. Then got into Australian Formula 2 and I won that national championship in 1980. Then sort of family and business got in the road of my motor racing uh, aspirations. So I, I was in and out of motorsport during the 80s. Uh, uh, retire, come back a year or two years later, do a few races, retire again. Did my final race in, um, at the Adelaide Grand Prix in uh, 1991 in a Formula Holden car. I was always running open wheelers. Uh, and at that stage, my eldest boy, Alex, uh, had an inkling to go go-kart racing. He was only 11 or 12 at the time. So I started uh, sort of supporting him in go-karts. And then my younger son, Will, got into go-karts. And any further aspirations of going motor racing sort of went by the by. But I just got so much enjoyment out of helping them with their careers and really trying to guide them into not making all the mistakes that I made because I just didn't have that, that guidance. And uh, it was really only a couple of years ago, it was 21 years after I'd, since I'd raced, I, I had a, a Formula 5000 that uh, I'd had for many years that uh, had been sitting in mothballs and we did a big restoration on it and uh, my re-entry into motorsport was in a, Formula, a Lola T332 Formula 5000, actually an ex-Guy Edwards car which uh, of course, all, all the um, all of you, you English people would know very, very well uh, that he campaigned here in the in '74 and '75. So uh, that was a bit of reintroduction of fire, but uh, uh, lived to tell the tale. And I've just sold that car. So my brother Chris, who's a very persistent human being, convinced me that we should come over to and do the Walter Hayes. So this is a, my first Formula Ford uh, outing since 1979, and I am a little bit underprepared, but. Uh, just wishing we could rewind now to Thursday. If I could sort of knew then what I know now, life would be a little bit easier. But look, we're just we're having so much fun, and what a, what an amazing event this is. So, how has it gone for you so far, the event? Well, by the time we finished Friday, because it was wet Thursday, Friday, I was actually right. going really well on the wet. Um, you know, I was only a couple of seconds off the the actual leading guys, and uh, you know, I was the quickest guy in the wet of our garage, which which. Um, which includes guys like Rick Morris, who is a legend of uh, Formula Ford and the sport. Uh, but then qualifying, it was dry. My first laps of the circuit in the dry were in a 10 minute qualifying session. And uh, so I struggled a bit in qualifying and we subsequently found we had a major problem with the front brake calipers and I was locking rears and locking fronts. So cut a long story short, I just missed out on getting into the uh, last chance final in that race this morning. I had to finish Six. I started 12th, I needed to finish 6th and I finished 7th, so now going into the historic final because we're in pre-90 cars and I'm as happy as Larry, I'm just going to enjoy my racing now. Well I hope the rest of the event goes well for you. Thank you Graeme. And, and uh, thanks very much for the interview. And I've just got to thank all, all the people here, all the marshals and organisers and James Beckett, I mean this, this is just an absolute credit to everybody involved. But again, it's you guys who make the events as well, making the trip all the way over here as well, you know. Well, the bad news about that is we'll probably come back and do it again, I hope. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much for the interview. Thank you. Hi, Chris. Uh, hey, you, Graeme. Nice to see you again. Good to see you back again after I, saw you, I spoke to you last year, if you remember. Look, it's just wonderful to be here. Uh, a place like Silverstone is iconic for us people on the other side of the world. It's an iconic place. And... Uh, for Richard and I to come over here, we talked about doing this 35 years ago when we were 
probably in our fast young days and through family and business it could never happen and when I came here last year uh, with another Aussie guy John Miles I realised that the way James Beckett has this set up with the uh, historic final and it didn't matter whether you were the oldest driver in the oldest car or the next world champion in the latest works car everyone got treated with respect everyone got the same opportunity and what a wonderful opportunity for us to come and do this so we wrapped so how's the event gone so far for you this weekend? Uh, probably a bit of a struggle for me personally. Uh, I've spent the last 20 years as a rugby coach and I uh, always was regretted that I wasn't 6 foot 5 and 115 kilos. Um, so this has been good for me because I've probably lost uh, you know, 12 or 15 kilos to actually get in the car. But even at my size, it's a real struggle to get in the car. And then it rained for the first two days. In fact, that race then was our, our first lap around Silverstone to dry. So that's probably been disappointing. We looked at each other at the end of the race and said, oh, gee, I wish this was Thursday morning. But, you know, results were never high on the agenda. This was about participation and experience. And, you know, we just couldn't fault it. Uh, the way people have uh, uh, treated us since we've been here. Uh, it's actually, Graham, it, I describe it as very humbling. Um, and uh, so it's been wonderful, really has been fantastic. Uh, well, you've got the historic final as well, haven't you? Yes, well, that was our focus. That's what I learned last year, that if, if you're a little bit older, uh, you could come over here and, and target, as we are in the pre-90 cars, target the historic final. And maybe if you then got lucky, you'd get in the last chance, and the, I call them the last chance bun fight, the second last chance bun fight. And uh, Friday, I haven't made in the next race, uh, last chance final. Um, but then I've got the historic final. Uh, but just uh, as an aside, I met a young Irish girl here, Jennifer Mullen, last year. Really looked up to her for what she was doing. And she's coming to Phillip Island next year to drive my car. I have my 40-year-old daughter driving down there. We have another girl. We're going to have an all-female team. And uh, we have a young girl working on our car in, uh, with uh, Soli Motorsport. She's going to come down as well. So my mother was an iconic woman in, in a motorsport. And I feel that I can contribute back now by, by encouraging female participation. So this might be my swan song as a driver, but definitely not my swan song as, as a participant. You know? That's brilliant, Chris. Thank you very much for the interview, and I hope it goes well in the historic final. So do I. Uh, if I end up at the end of the weekend with a smile on my face and the wheels on my car, I'll be thrilled. Thanks for the interview. Thanks very much.